What's up guys? Tim from Red Goat Garage here and today we're going to talk LS swapping Tri-5 Chevys. Um, so let's get to it. So here is my 55 that has been LS swapped. So I'm going to go over the kind of the basic process of this. This is not a, exactly a how-to video. This is just a how it was done video. Um, just to show you some of the things you need to consider when putting one of these engines in your Tri-5. So first and foremost, you need an LS engine. Um, any of them would fit or work in there. It's, you know, this one's an LS one out of a Camaro, but um, I mean, you could use a truck engine or whatever you want to use. It really doesn't matter. Um, so there's a few different ways to go about swapping an LS engine and everybody's going to have their opinion on which way is the best or the worst and um, they all have their merits. So first and foremost is you need to fit this thing in here, right? So how do you do that? Well, um, this one has, I don't know if you guys can see it because it's dark, but there's motor mounts that are welded to the frame. I've used CPP kit before, um, which comes with the motor mounts, it comes with the oil pan, comes with the headers, all that worked phenomenal. Everything bolted right in. This was actually in this car before I bought it. But I've also LS swapped my Cadillac right there and my Chevelle right there. And so there's just, the process is about the same. You kind of kind of go through every system. So you got to get it in there. Um, like I said, there's a bunch of different companies that sell motor mounts that you can bolt in or weld in. I don't know what brand these are, but they look like they bolted in. It's a little side mount and it converts it to a small block Chevy mount which is what is in the Chevelle there and in the Cadillac also. So just use a traditional small block Chevy mount with a little adapter plate on the side of the block because the LS ones are really, really big. Um, headers, like I said, I know the CPP headers work great and they fit and they clear the steering box. These are actually the cast manifolds from the Camaro, the LS one Camaro and they clear the steering box. I'm sure there's other companies that make LS swap headers. Um, you know, you have to just do your research there. So that would get you the engine in there and get your exhaust going. Transmission wise, um, you know, you can use pretty much any transmission behind it. This one has a 4L80E and it, I did not have to cut the, tr the trans hump. So you could use a 4L60E, turbo 400, turbo 350, power glide whatever you want pretty much, and it'll fit in these cars. Um, I haven't put a manual in them, but um, I'm sure the fine folks at American Powertrain could tell you what fits and what doesn't. All right, so your engine's in. Oh yeah, and one huge important critical thing with the engine is you're gonna have to put a different oil pan on there. I don't know if we can see this one. Um, that guy right there. So that's a Holly pan. Um, there's different ones. I believe this is like the original Holly LS swap pan because the sump is far back so you can see that center link right in front of it. If you get the wrong one, the center link will hit. Ask me how I know. So you got to get that that oil pan. That'll give you clearance so you can see like I'm pretty much level with the cross member here. Maybe down just a hair, but it'll fit. That's important too while you're putting the engine in. So you get that in there. Get the oil pan on. You know, get the engine in, get your exhaust in. It might be easier to get the exhaust in from the bottom, depending on whatever you're using. Next, you need something to run this engine. Um, this one uses a factory computer that's been cleaned up. I'm, it's mounted right here, which is, I don't know, fine, I guess. Uh, not the cleanest, but whatever. I don't really care on this car. Um, I've used painless harnesses before, so those are like a factory original style that's already been cleaned up, and they still use that same 0411 computer. They work phenomenal, they're great. Um, this one has a cleaned up harness, I can, I'll show you this car in a second. And the Chevelle has a Holley Terminator, um, or actually it has an HP EFI, which they don't even make anymore, but it's basically an older version of the Terminator. So you need something, a computer, to obviously run it to do all your ignition and coils and everything. Now, you can run a carburetor on these. It requires a special intake that I believe Edelbrock makes a version and Holly makes a version to mount the carburetor there. Uh, but then you do need an MSD box to fire all your coils. 
So that's an option too. If you really want to stick with a carburetor, why you'd want to do that, I have no idea. To me, the whole point of an LS is to go fuel injection and get all the benefits there, but whatever. Um, so like I said, a couple different ways to go about your computer. Uh, pros and cons there, the factory original stuff is it's super heavy duty stuff. I mean, you can have like half the wires gone and I swear the thing will still run. The Holly stuff's a little more sensitive. The Holly can be remote tuned, where these you actually need a tuner to tune it. So either A, you mail out your, your computer and they do everything and then mail it back, or B, you have somebody come to your house or you take the car to a shop and they tune it for you. Um, either way, not a huge deal, but just uh, something to be considered about. Um, accessory drives. So this one uses the factory uh, Camaro one, but it's hard to see down here. Let me see if I can see it. Wow. It's really dark, I apologize. But the alternator on this one is low mount and whoever did this swap, they actually notched the cross member to fit. You do not have to do that though. There's other accessory drives that will fit. Um, there's a lot of companies like Holly makes like a mid mount and a high mount. Um, I did a low car uh, LS classic system which puts the alternator up here and it uses a different power steering pump that has a separate a different reservoir and that worked fine like we didn't have to notch anything or whatever so again there's a lot of different ways to go about that but this one's the factory Camaro one with um, I forget who makes these brackets to mount the AC compressor so it's a vintage air deal but I bought these separately but again there's so many companies that make brackets like I believe it's ICT Billet makes a ton of different brackets to mount things all over the place. Um, there is differences though with the, the crank pulley. So the, the car ones are, are like kind of what you consider like a short water pump and the truck ones are like more like a long water pump. Like if you're thinking about it like in terms of like a traditional small block or big block. Either one would really work. It doesn't really matter unless you're really cramped for space but either one would work um cooling so you got to get a cooling system now you can reuse your radiator um you might be able to get away with it in the v8 position i don't know but on this one it would be it wouldn't work so this is a, like in the v6 position or v6 straight six position so it's in front to me it makes way more sense to do that i don't even know what brand radio this is i don't know anything about it but it was in here when we bought the car i'm not 100 percent confident in it it's cooling ability especially here in texas but i guess i'm going to find out so it does have a shroud and it does have the big electric fan in the middle um i did a champion cooling system so they have radiators like this but they also have a really nice big one that comes out way like out to here like halfway and on both sides really big radiator and it mounts through these side panels you can buy new ones or they give you a template to cut it actually worked really well um I, I, to the point that i'm actually going to ditch this and get one of their big radiator setups because i'm going to do i'm doing vintage air in this car and everything and so in texas i don't ever have to want to worry worry about overheating so i'm just going to do that and get rid of this setup here so all right i know i'm going fast here but like i said this is just kind of an overview video so your engine's in there it's got some oil pan on you got your computer system figured out got your accessories figured out got your cooling figured out uh fuel system so this is the big one um you need a high pressure fuel pump. Now, again, there's several ways to go about this. I personally do not recommend ever using an inline pump. And there'll be some guys that'll say, oh, I've always done it and I've never had a problem. And that's great. Uh, but I've had numerous problems with it. So I don't do those anymore. Um, in short, it causes vapor lock and all sorts of issues. And there's a whole bunch of reasons for that. Um, but so what I used on this car is, you can't really see, but it's a Tanks ink tank and pump. So it looks factory, but it actually has an in-tank pump. Now, if you want a bigger tank, CPP makes a, I believe it's like a 24 or 20 and a 24 ver gallon version that I, I did it on my dad's car. 
It's like a fabricated sheet metal one that goes all the way across. So they have one that you can still use your spare tire mount, and the other one you take out. And that one's a really awesome tank too, because it's huge. You can get like 500 miles to the tank on that. But, so you need that. You gotta run your high pressure lines all the way from the back to the front. Gotta have a wire going back there to run the fuel system as well. Um, what else do we got here? So, like I said, I always look at everything as kind of a, a system. So there's your exhaust system, there's your cooling system, you know, your electrical system, all that. Um, air intake, this this is all Spectra set, set up. I have the filter, it's just in the back um, that I used, made, made up, but um, LS engines, they generally like to have cooler air. Do not put a filter on the end of the throttle body. That's a big no-no. You gotta have it off to the side getting some cooler air. Um, if you hate the coils, there is plenty of options there. They make these, uh, these are Holly valve covers, so they are cleaned up. I think they look really nice, but they make ones that have like covers on them. If you actually look on one of my other videos, you'll see me putting some Holly ones on, on my tea bucket that have these covers that go off them. Those ones are really cool. Um, I don't, I would assume it would clear this booster, but I'm not positive. Um, on my dad's car, we used an LS Classic. We did their, all their stuff and we mounted these coils down on the frame and then they include an extra long uh, harness and plug wires and all that. And so you could actually completely hide the coils if you don't want to see them. I know that's usually the biggest gripe most people have about LS engines is oh you see all the coils so there's plenty of options to either hide them or just move them out of the way completely so that's kind of it um so there's there's so much to this but and there's so many different ways and so many different companies that make products if you're really uh, I don't know struggling with this or researching it and just don't want to have to like try to figure this out honestly cpp classic performance products they make a whole like ls swap kit that comes with the oil pan it comes with the mounts it comes with the headers all that stuff towards like you basically put all their stuff on and things gonna bolt in um what else here that's about it it's honestly it's not a ton more work than if you were swapping a small block to a big block or vice versa or putting in any other engine you got to have your exhaust and everything else um, in there so i can show you this car really quick so this 62 cadillac so it obviously has nothing to do with a tri-5 but let me get the hood open so this one i did really dirty i didn't i didn't clean anything on it or anything so again, on this car, I made my own motor mounts. I welded them in because nobody made a kit for this car when I did this swap. I used the stock cast iron manifolds. This one has a truck accessory drive on it, so you can see that the, the power steering pump's low, the alternator's high. I don't know if that would work on an LS, or I'm sorry, on a Tri-5, because I think that power steering pump's gonna be in the way. So you gotta kinda get the other style that brings all this up. Um, again, this one has a stock computer. Here it is mounted in this nice old dish, dish towel. Just sitting here. Someday I'll get around to the mounting that properly. Um, this one, I did a 4th gen Camaro radiator and fan combo. So it never overheats on me, nothing. Works great. Um, it uses that same Holly LS oil pan same bracketry i forget again forget the company that does these brackets but you can find them if you google it um so again it's kind of the same thing right you got to get the engine in there get the oil pan um oh yeah look at this is one thing your actual throttle cable so this one's a throttle by cable and it is a, a low car cable and same thing on this one actually so they do have drive-by-wire, drive-by-cable. Either one works. But this one, these two are both drive-by-cable. Actually, my Chevelle is as well. And they all three use low-car cables. This one has a low-car pedal that's specifically made for Tri-5s 
that bolts in, uses tri, you know, four tri five, gives you the cable, makes it a whole simple bolt in deal. Um, I can kind of show you what that looks like. There you go. Um, I know it's dark, but it works. So um, there's that. They sell the little matching covers for your brake pedal. Um, one question you might have is gauges. How does that all work? Um, so you you could make your factory gauges work, but that would require a little bit of work because you're gonna have to do oil pressure setting unit, water temperature, the speedometers, the, it's a mechanical speedometer. So they do make, uh, Dakota Digital actually makes a little box that picks up the signal from an electronic output and converts it into a mechanical output. I've used one, it worked flawless, it was great. Um, so you can make all your factory gauges work. This car, which I don't know where the hell I have them, but I actually did Dakota Digital. And for that, I actually have Dakota Digital and everything. I have it in the Cadillac and the Chevelle. My 57, everything's stock there. So I'm not even gonna talk about that car, but the Dakota Digital stuff's great because it'll actually accept the, it gives you a tachometer, it gives you speedometer, it gives you water, all, all this stuff. And they have a bunch of different variations or versions. Um, they have ones that look completely stock, but they're all updated. Those are amazing. Um, just kind of whatever whatever flavor you want. So that's another thing to think about as well. So is it mandatory for the engine to run and drive? No, but I'm sure you're gonna wanna know how fast you're going or how much oil pressure you have. Usually on these as well, um, as far as like water temperature and oil pressure, usually the computer does not need to see oil pressure. Um, so you can use, there's kind of back there like where the distributor would be, there's a set, there's a, you can put a sending unit in there. And then for water temperature, either, no matter what system you use, a factory or Holly or Phytech or whatever, they're all gonna need to see water temperature because that's part of the, the tables so most of the time it's wired in right here at the front of the head but if you're wiring in your gauges the heads are the same left to right so that means you can wire one in back there and i have the dakota digital plugged in back there but you just can't see it and then oil pressure if you do need the computer requires it and you want gauges so you can do the computer up there and then above the oil filter, there's this little plate that where cooler lines would mount, but in a lot of cars, there's just a, a bypass. You can take that bypass drill and tap it and put a sending unit in there. And that's what I did for the Chevelle and I think this Cadillac, I did that as well. Um, so there's, there's options there. Again, it's been done before. So um, yeah, I, I'm gonna cut the video short because I don't really know what else to say. If you have questions, you know, ask me in the comments below. I'd be more than happy to help you with, you know, whatever you need. But uh, again, everybody's going to have their opinions on what's the best way to do it or the easiest way, the cheapest way. I mean, there's ways that you can do it that it's very expensive but makes it very easy, or you can do ways that are very cheap but require more fabrication on your part. So it just depends on your skill level and everything. Um, like I said, like the CPP stuff was great on my dad's car. It was it worked so well. And actually, the Chevelle I used their kit as well. Um, thinking back now, that's, that's oh, a decade ago. But I did their mounts and their exhaust and all that, and bolted it all right in. So they have some really great products and um, that aren't going to break the bank, which I like. So, anyways, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, whatever, put them in the comments below. Thanks for watching. See you next time.